It is 3 a.m. and you're wide awake, staring at the ceiling. Your mind is racing with thoughts about work projects, family issues, and health worries. Your chest feels tight and your stomach is in knots. Sound familiar? We've all been there. But what if I told you there's a way to find peace even when life feels overwhelming? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. In this video, I'm going to break down exactly how you can give your worries to Allah and free your mind. So if you're tired of losing sleep, tired of feeling overwhelmed, tired of letting worry control your life, then make sure you keep watching. Because by the end of this video, you'll have the tools to transform your mindset and find the peace you've been missing. Point number one. Trust beyond fear. What does tawakkul mean? Simply put, it means putting your full trust in Allah. It's understanding that no matter what happens, Allah is with you. It's about truly surrendering to Allah's plan, good or bad. So why is it so important? Because without tawakkul, we are literally just stumbling around in the dark, thinking we're in control when we are not. The Qur'an tells us, And upon Allah let the believers rely. It's not a suggestion, it's an order. The Qur'an also says, And whoever relies upon Allah, then he is sufficient for him. The Prophet Muhammad wasallam said, If you trust Allah with the right kind of trust, He will provide you sustenance as He provides for the birds. They go out in the morning with empty stomachs, and come back in the evening with full stomachs. Think about that for a second. Birds don't stress about their next meal. They just trust that it will be there. That's the level of reliance Allah wants us to have. Tawakkul isn't about expecting miracles while you sit back and do nothing. It's about doing your part, then letting go and trusting Allah with the results. It's a balance, and we'll talk more about that later on. Point number two, trap of overthinking. Ahmed had just finished a job interview. As he left, his mind raced with the doubts. Did I answer well enough? What if they chose someone else? At dinner, Ahmed's family noticed his distracted state. His father reminded him, you did your best, trust in Allah's plan. Ahmed took his father's advice, focusing on family time that evening. The next morning, he received an email inviting him for a second interview. He smiled, realizing worrying hadn't changed anything. Overthinking messes with our faith and our health. Think about it. When we're stressed about every little thing that could go wrong, what are we really saying? We're basically telling Allah that we lack trust. It sounds harsh, but it's true, isn't it? When we're overthinking, we're not relying on our law. We're relying on our own messed up limited thinking. Thinking that we can control everything just by worrying about it. And it's not just our faith that suffers. This constant stress also affects our bodies. Headaches, high blood pressure, trouble sleeping, feeling low all the time. That's the impact of overthinking on us. How many times have you made yourself sick with worry over something that never even happened? But here's the thing brothers and sisters, we don't have to live like this. Our deen gives us a way out. It starts with realizing that all this worrying isn't doing us any good. It's not making us more prepared. It's just stealing our peace and our trust in Allah. So next time your mind starts spinning, take a breath. Remember who's really in control. Point number three, practical steps to give worries to Allah. Imagine being able to hand over your heaviest burdens to someone infinitely stronger than you. That's what giving your worries to Allah is all about. Now, let's talk about how to practically implement this into your life. With consistent effort, you can develop a powerful habit of relying on Allah. First, focus on strengthening your faith through knowledge. The more you understand Allah's names, attributes, and the wisdom behind His commands, the easier it becomes to trust Him. Dedicate time to studying the Qur'an, learning about the Prophet's life, 
and gaining insight from reliable Islamic sources. This knowledge will protect you from doubt and worry. Next, make sure you do regular prayer and dua. Behind the obligatory prayers, make a habit of turning to Allah throughout your day. When worries pop into your mind, immediately channel them into dua. The Prophet ﷺ said, Dua is the weapon of the believer. Use this weapon freely. Be honest and open with Allah about your fears and concerns, knowing that He is all hearing and all responding. Lastly, practice gratitude consistently. In times of stress, it's easy to lose sight of our blessings. Combat this by actively acknowledging Allah's favors in your life. Start each day by thanking Him for three specific things. This simple practice will shift your perspective and help you focus on the blessing in your life rather than potential problems. Remember, giving your worries to Allah is a skill that improves with practice just like anything. It may feel challenging at first but over time you'll find yourself naturally turning to Allah in times of difficulty. Point number four, balancing tawakkul with action. Let's clear up a big misconception about tawakkul. Some people think that trusting in Allah means sitting back and waiting for miracles to happen. They'll say, I'm not going to look for a job. I'll just have tawakkul that Allah will provide. That's not how it works. True tawakkul is about striking a balance between relying on Allah and taking action. It's about doing your part while understanding that the ultimate outcome is in Allah's hands. This isn't a new idea. In fact, it's exactly how our Prophet Muhammad lived his life. Look at the Prophet examples during the Battle of Uhud. He didn't just make dua and expect a victory. He strategized, prepared the army and actively participated in the battle. At the same time, he fully trusted that the outcome was in Allah's control. That's a real tawakkul in action. Or consider how the Prophet dealt with worldly matters. He worked as a shepherd and a merchant. He sought medical treatment when ill. He took precautions for his safety, all while maintaining complete trust in Allah's plan. Do your best in this world while keeping your heart attached to Allah. It's about taking the means that Allah has provided, then trusting Him with the results. So next time you're facing a challenge, ask yourself, what would the Prophet ﷺ do? Chances are, he ﷺ would take action and put his trust in Allah. That's the balance we should all aim for. Do your part, then leave the rest to Allah. Point not five. Freeing your mind through submission. Imagine a life where setbacks don't upset you, where success doesn't make you arrogant. That's the freedom that comes from true submission to Allah. When your primary goal shifts from achieving worldly outcomes to simply pleasing Allah, everything changes. Suddenly that promotion you didn't get or the opportunity you missed doesn't sound like a big deal. Why? Because you know that if it was truly best for you, Allah would have decreed it. This doesn't mean you don't feel disappointment or sadness. You're human after all. But it does mean that these feelings don't consume you. Instead, you find yourself asking, what can I learn from this? How can I use this situation to draw closer to Allah? On the flip side, when things go well, you're not overcome with pride or arrogance. You recognize that your success is a blessing from Allah, not solely the results of your own efforts. This keeps you humble and grateful. And the beauty of this mindset is that it frees you from the exhausting cycle of worldly highs and lows. Your contentment comes from knowing that you're aiming to please Allah, not from external validations or achievements. And this is the exact message of what Allah tells us in the Quran. Unquestionably, by the remembrance of Allah, hearts are assured. When your goal is Allah's pleasure above all else, you find a peace that nothing in this world can disturb. Point number six, dealing with the recurring worries. Let's face it, brothers and sisters. Even when we're trying our best to trust in Allah, those worries keep coming back. 
One powerful technique for redirecting those thoughts is what I call the catch and replace method. When you catch yourself worrying, immediately replace that thought with a dhikr or a short dua. It could be as simple as saying, Hasbunallahu wa ni'mal wakil. Allah is sufficient for us and He is the best disposer of affairs. Another effective strategy is to challenge these worries head on. Ask yourself, is this worry helping me in any way? Is it changing the outcome? Most of the time the answer is no. Then remind yourself, Allah is in control and His plan is perfect. This rational approach combined with faith can help put things in perspective. Now here's the important part, patience and consistency. Don't expect to banish all worries overnight. It takes time to rewire your brain from its habit of worry to a habit of trust in Allah. There will be days when it feels like you're back at square one and that's normal. The key is to keep at it day after day, worry after worry. Each time you redirect a worried thought to Allah, you're strengthening your tawakkul. So next time a worry appears in your mind, you know what to do. Catch them, replace them, challenge them if needed, and keep doing it consistently. With patience and practice, you'll find those worries have less and less power over you, and your trust in Allah grows stronger each day. Point number seven, building a worry-free lifestyle. We've been talking about defending our life from worry attacks. But what if we could build it so strong that worries barely even make a dent? First, let's talk about your circle. You are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. Surround yourself with brothers who can lift you up, who remind you of Allah when you forget. Seek out friends who respond to difficulties with Alhamdulillah and Inshallah instead of panic and complaints. Their positive attitude will rub off on you more than you realize. But don't just rely on others. Create an environment that constantly reminds you of Allah's presence and power. Put up verses around your home. Set Islamic reminders on your phone. Listen to Quran or beneficial Islamic lectures during your free time. Start your morning with the dua of waking up, thanking Allah for another day of life. Take a few minutes to read and reflect on a verse from the Quran. Remember brothers and sisters, Building a worry-free lifestyle is a process. It's about consistently choosing trust over worry, gratitude over complaint, action over paralysis. It's about creating a life where tawakkul isn't just a concept, but a living, breathing reality that shapes your every day. So start small, but start today. Choose one habit to implement, one change to make in your environment. Over time, you'll find that your faith becomes so strong that worries will just stop bouncing off it. That's the power of building a lifestyle centered on trust in Allah. So I challenge you, take what you've learned today and put it into action. Embrace this mindset of true reliance on Allah because when you do, you'll find a strength within yourself you never knew existed. By the way, if you are interested in growing a halal faceless automated YouTube channel, I am currently working on an ebook. This ebook shares the secrets I used to grow my channel to over 100,000 subscribers in just three to four months. If you want to be one of the first to know when the ebook is out, join my email newsletter. The link is in the description. If you made it to the end, comment we are brave and don't forget to like and subscribe. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.